Hello there, in today's video I want to talk about scaling of production. So when we start off the game we'll have a few graphite presses, some silicon smelters, and some kilns. Uh, we, we'll generally follow one of these designs here. Uh, and this gets us you know, a little bit of production. Uh, and we can even scale this a little bit by copying and pasting or even mirroring some of these like this. Uh, and this works for a little bit, however for large scale production this isn't quite good enough. So today I'm going to talk about using some of my favorite schematics and how to scale them up. Let's start off with the graphite scaling. So to reiterate, we have our graphite stack here, we have our graphite two by two. Now if we take our graphite two by two and we copy the bottom three rows like this, you can see that we end up with a two by six. And that gives us just a little bit more production in a pretty compact little space. Uh, we can't do that with the stack very well, um, but so that one has a little bit of scaling at that point, but we'll see that a little bit later. Now, if you take two of these two by sixes and put them right next to each other, you can end up with a four by three setup, and you just feed in your your graphite or your coal from any direction, and feed your graphite out the bottom. So that's a quick way to scale this from the two by two design uh, to uh, quickly get to a three by four design. Now, other options that I had here, I wanted to show uh, and talk about some of the the drawbacks here. With this one here, we have the three by three design, and this one uses a number of unloaders, works pretty good. You can It takes two conveyor belts worth of coal and feeds out uh, all of your graphite out the bottom. Now, I want you to notice here that the graphite, there's a little bit of gap between some of the graphite, and that means that the conveyor belt is able to empty the material fast enough to be able to keep up with the production. Now, that's something we'll, we'll keep our eye out on that because that can be a problem as we scale our production. Uh, so here's our 4x4 design, the 4x4 design I came up with. You have unloaders. Uh, in between all of these that allows you to feed in material from any direction and it will be shared throughout all of these. Now it's kind of expensive because of all that silicon that's used for the unloaders uh, and so a better option for that is to use the stack design. Now for the stack you just mirror them and flip them like this and you can get four of them in a row uh, that then unload using a plastinium, plastinium conveyor belt to get all of your graphite out. Uh, the downside of this is that and you don't see it very well here is that all of these conveyor belts are going to have to come from wherever there's coal. And sometimes if the coal's all on one side, you're going to have to feed in conveyor belts and aim specifically for these junctions. So you're going to have to cross your plastinium conveyor belt and it can get kind of messy. Other than that, it's a pretty decent design. If you're, you don't have to worry about laying your conveyor belts down pretty quickly, uh, this will work for you. Uh, other option here is you just take that two by three design, expand it down one more row and you have a two by four and you feed in all of your coal uh, and you're still able to get all of your plastinium conveyor or all of your material out using a plastinium conveyor belt. Uh, so graphite is a pretty good use case for this design. Now Metaglass has uh, a couple benefits and downsides for scaling. So the benefit is Metaglass allows you to produce a lot more Metaglass very quickly. So a kiln produces more Metaglass faster than one single graphite press produces graphite. Uh, so you have your stack design here, your 2x2 two two design, you can still do the 2x3 design, but notice that there's so much metaglass coming out the bottom here that it's going to start having problems where the conveyor belt is not able to keep up with it. And in this case, you'll also see the problem in the bridges. The bridges aren't able to, to empty out the material fast enough. Uh, and you'll start to see that problem as we go onto some of the other designs. You see right here, the 2x6 design, sometimes you see this, see this one go orange, that means that there's, it's not able to empty the metaglass fast enough. So again, you can put two of the two by sixes right next to each other, feed in the inputs, and that works pretty good. For this one, I included the scrap arrow in here to so, show that you can go ahead and do this design. You can also copy this and stick it right next to each other, and you'll have that production scaled. Uh, not quite as much as the two by six, but again, a two by two. Uh, I took the same design that I had for the graphite three by three and said, all right, what's happening here? And you can see that there are two and a half, sometimes three of these kilns that are not able to get the metaglass out. And that's because the conveyor belt only empties 11 items at a time. Same thing with the bridges. And so this design is not a good option for the metaglass. Okay. So I went with this option here where we have the plastinium conveyor belt and then these, these unloaders in between all of it. Uh, this one's able to unload all of the metaglass pretty quickly. Now the problem with this one is you, why do you need so much metaglass, right? Are you building a lot of pipes? Or are you, are you doing a lot of anti-air? That's a lot of metaglass. So you probably won't need to scale this much unless you're exporting off to other sectors. Uh, but I'll show you that one here just in case you're interested. 
Uh, now the stack design also does work here. You can see that the plastinium conveyor belt empties it just like it would this other 4x4. But you do have to feed in your materials into these junctions. Now if you have your sand up here and your medical and yeah your your uh, your lead down here, you then have to have these conveyor belts running up and down to get the sand specifically lined up to where it needs to go and up into the top parts. And so it ends up with quite a mess of material going back and forth to be able to get this one to work. Real quick, here's an example of what I mean by spaghetti mess. You can see if the sand's on the top and the coal's on the bottom, you end up with a lot of conveyor belts everywhere. Is it a deal breaker? No, but it does end up with a lot of spaghetti if you're trying to use this design. Whereas if you had this design and you can feed a material from any direction, you just have your sand coming from the top or lead coming from the bottom or the right or whichever direction, you don't have to have these conveyor belts snaking all over the place to be able to get where they want to go. So now looking at silicon, it's the same story here. We got the silicon stack, silicon 2x2, two two, silicon 2x3. Two you can take two of the 2x3s two and stick them right next to each other. In this case, the conveyor belt is able to empty the material fast, uh, as fast as the smelters are able to produce it. So this is a workable solution. Here is the scrap arrow attached to one of these. Works pretty good. Now for the 3x3 three three design, this one, uh, you can see that the silicon is not able to empty quite on this one enough to be able to keep up, or the, 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 the conveyor belt is not fast enough to keep up with the production. So in this case, you could probably add a couple more of these, come off and add, you know, maybe a plastinium conveyor belt here. Um, so this one's not quite as good. I think the two by three is a better option. It uses a uh, little less space overall, if you consider everything. Uh, and so this one, this one is not a great option. Uh, just for consistency, here's the four by four option. Uh, it is able to keep up with it. You can feed it and everything from the sides pretty easy uh, without having to uh, worry too much about the spaghetti problem. Here's the, the stack version. Again, plastinium conveyor belt able to keep up with it. So not a lot to see here that we haven't seen, but did want to show you that in case you're interested. And again, here's the two by three. This is what I would, I would recommend for long, large scale production if you want to keep your spaghetti mess down to a minimum. Now you can take half of this and just do uh, you know eight of these if you want to do that. A lot less spaghetti mess if you only do half of that. But just something to consider when you're scaling these things. You want to look at the the conveyor belt that is taking the material out. Make sure that it doesn't get too overwhelmed with the amount of produce, production that you're doing. Uh, here I'll go ahead and finish off with the pyrotite. Pyrotite has a its stack. It's a little bit messier to scale, and we'll see that in a second. Uh, here's the 2x2. Two two. You'll notice that the pyrotite is a lot slower at production, so you can end up with a lot more items with only one regular titanium conveyor belt emptying it. So here's a 2x3. Two There's a lot of space left on that conveyor belt. Here's your 2x3, two, two of them right next to each other. Uh, here is your scrap arrow attached to this as well, and it's able to do a pretty good job there. Uh, now moving on to the 3x3 design, this one has a lot of space left in its conveyor belt, so this one will work for feeding in all the materials from different directions. Here is the 4x4 design, this one works if you're looking for consistency and you want to just say I want to follow this design, that works as well. Now for the stack design, you have to actually have space between the two of them because it will unload material onto your conveyor belt if you're actually touching because of the way the sorters work. So this one is a little bit bigger. Again, you can have only half of it if you don't want to have the full thing. Then you don't have to worry about that problem. Uh, but again, this is the one I would use here personally. It's a two of the two by threes. It works pretty good uh, to get you a, a lot of pyrotite. Now let's talk about something that's not quite scaling, but it helps us to produce all of the materials that we would want early game all close together. And that is this design where we have our kiln, our graphite, our silicon smelter, and our pyrotite mixture all in one. Uh, you can do that with the two by two, um, and you get you know a bunch of a bunch of all the different materials coming out. Uh, and you can scale it like this if you want, rather than scaling a whole bunch of kilns and pyrotite all at the same time. This will work. Granted, you you do want to send this to probably your core because you have a mix of materials, uh, and this can cause you problems at some sometimes, but. Uh, Again, if you're just put, wanting to put this in your core, this will work. Uh, you can also take this approach where you take 
each of the two by twos and stick them on this design. And I talked about the four by four design like this as not being the best approach, uh, unless you're wanting all four types in one plastinium conveyor belt. So this one I probably would use uh, to be able to feed in your material and have them all close together if you want to go with that design. Alternatively, you can have them instead of facing inwards to the plastinium conveyor belt, you have them facing outwards. Uh, you can still feed in your material from any direction and then just have your material go out on the plastinium conveyor belt wherever you want it to go. This was this is what it would look like if you did it with the stack approach. Have them facing in like this. You want to make sure that you're not touching the iron type mixer stack, uh, and this one also works. Again, you will still need to make sure that your your conveyor belts are able to touch all of these junctions properly, uh, without having jams. Sometimes if you get close to these, uh, too close to each other, you can end up causing problems with the uh, crossovers and things like that. So uh, that's what it will look like if you want to have all of your materials pretty close together. All right, there you have an overview of a lot of the items you want to think about as you're doing scaling of production. I like scaling my production this way and then taking the output of these uh, factories and feeding them to where they need to go, whether they're guns or to make units or to ship it off, off of the sector. Uh, this is the approach that I would recommend rather than having the production built into your factories or your units and your guns, have it be built separate and then feed it as a conveyor belt. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.